Okay, folks, what I want to talk about tonight is the use of these 10 meter uh, galaxy radios, or sometimes they're called export radios, that are modified for use on the CB band. The issue is that when this is done, some of these radios produce a spur that can have an output on the 10 meter amateur band. And I wanted to discuss the technical reason that this happens and then show a spectrum analyzer display and then show the result on a receiver. So let's go through the technical reason first. Here is a block diagram of the phase lock loop and the mixer and the uh, amplifier stage in one of these radios. And if you'll follow me on the mouse, we've got a 10.24 megahertz uh, crystal oscillator here that's divided down to give us 10 kilohertz and this gives us 10 kilohertz steps coming out of the phase lock loop. We're going to show this for channel 28 would be 27.285. So uh, for 27.285 the channel selector puts out a divide by n of 303 which produces at the VCO a frequency output of 16.59 megahertz. That frequency goes into the mixer here and it also goes down to the mixer here. Now for this mixer, this is for the phase lock loop, it's mixed with 13.56 and the result is 3.03 .03 megahertz which is divided by 303 to give us the 10 kilohertz over the phase detector. And, <clears throat> and when the uh, phase lock loop is locked, both sides will be 10 kilohertz and the VCO will put out 16.59. That 16.59 is mixed with this 10.695 megahertz crystal oscillator to produce the 27.285 signal that goes into the RF amplifier and out the antenna. Here's the math right here. 16.59 plus 10.695 is 27.285. Okay, you shouldn't be using the radio there, but if you are, you are. And with this situation everything looks fine but there is a problem and here is what happens in the red this mixer right here will be taking under normal conditions on channel 28 uh, the 16.59 megahertz coming out of the VCO this is a nonlinear mixer and all kinds of fun things happen there not only does it mix uh, your fundamental frequencies of 16.59 and 10.695 but it also mixes their harmonics and that's where the fun begins. If you look at this example here shown with the mouse if you take the third harmonic of 16.59 you get 49.77. If you take the second harmonic of 10.695 you get 21.39 megahertz. Now, if you subtract the 49 points, or I'm sorry, 21.39 from the 49.77 megahertz, which will happen in the mixer, the output is 28.380. Now, since the pass band of this radio and all the RF amplifier circuits are meant to pass that frequency anyway, and they're already sympathetic, the 27.285 and the 28.380 megahertz signals will both go through this RF amplifier and both go outside the antenna. And I'm going to show that shortly on the spectrum analyzer and on the receiver. I've made a little list here on Excel to show the frequencies that result. Now these are just the frequencies that I care about because these are the ones in the ham band and I am a ham and I've heard this happen firsthand and I'm thinking that if you're a conscientious operator you'd probably not want this to happen because us hams are a uh, rather protective bunch about our spectrum. Anyway, so starting at 27.155, which I think is channel 16, that'll put out a spur on 27.99, and then above that, all of these frequencies are in the ham bands. 
okay and the one we were showing was right here 27.285 the VCO puts out a frequency of 16.59 megahertz which we were showing and the spur occurs at 28.38 and the 10 meter amateur band goes from 28.0 to 29.7 and all of these frequencies that show the spurs are in the ham band okay next I'm going to show a spectrum analyzer output okay what we're looking at here is my spectrum analyzer I'm sorry if the focus is not what it could be but I'm working with what I have anyway what I wanted to do was show the relative power levels of the fundamental uh, carrier on 27285 and then the power level of the spur relative to that so there we go there's the main signal and the spectrum analyzer shows the peak to be right here at 27.284 something or other roughly 27.485 now here is the spur over here and yeah it's about 50 db down from the main one but hey when you guys dump these things into amplifiers even 50 db down is a few watts coming out on the, what frequency this is and according to the spectrum analyzer that's 28.381 megahertz Okay, what we're looking at right now is my ICOM 8500 communications receiver. And the reason we're doing this is because I know there are some of you out there that don't want to hear about the technical mumbo jumbo. You want to see an actual real world example. So you're going to get it. So here we are in 27285, and I'm going to key the transmitter and there it is on 27285 then I'm going to move the receiver over to 28380 and there is the uh, what is that uh, about 10 over S9 on the uh, meter and now I'm going to unkey the transmitter and there it goes away Okay guys, that's the end of my video. I just wanted to convey the fact that if you're using one of these Galaxy uh, 10 meter radios or export radios and you modify it to use it in the CB band, you may be putting out spurs where you really don't want to. So I'm not making a value judgment, I'm just reporting the facts. Thanks for watching.